Good morning. Myself, Dr. Radha Vattar. I am Professor and Head of Physiotherapy at Sanjati Institute College of Physiotherapy, Pune. It gives me immense pleasure and happiness to introduce Dr. Sanjeevni Kamle, who is my junior and a professional colleague. She is Associate Professor at D.Y. Patil College of Physiotherapy, Pune, having 11 years of teaching experience. She has done her Master's in Neurosciences and she is a PhD scholar at D.Y. Patil Vidyapit, Pune. She is uh, aerobics, pilates, ICF and diabetic educator instructor. She had done certification in EMG, NCV, NDT, SI and dry needling. She is an active member of International Federation of Neuro Rehab Association. She is a coordinator of IAP Women's Cell, Pimpri Chinchwar Branch, Pune. She is founder of Ladies Fusion Fitness Club. She has been resource person to many of the workshops on ICF, electrodiagnostic, yoga, diabetic educator and women's health at various places. She is a very keen researcher. She has successfully completed two extramural research funds as a primary investigator. She had 23 quartile one publications to her credits and Scopus and Web of Science with one patent publications and 84 plus citations to her credit with 4H indexed. She has won Young Researcher Award in 2021. There is a list which I can go through, but we will wind up here itself so that we can hear from Sanjeevni ma'am about electrodiagnostic way of assessing spasticity. Over to you, Sanjeevni ma'am. Thank you very much, Dada ma'am. I'm very happy uh, to discuss with you on this topic because uh, as we, we, uh, we were in our college, UG college, so always we discuss together these things in yeah. our lab. So uh, thank you very much for Sanjati management and uh, principal sir to giving me this opportunity. So with this, I will start this session. So I'm sharing my screen. Here, the topic of today's discussion is electrodiagnostic way of assessing spasticity. So as neurophysiotherapist, so we always deal with spasticity, how we can uh, do the treatment with spasticity, how we can relieve the spasticity because spasticity is the main, you can say, uh, uh, problem or impairment while neuro rehabilitation. So before that, assessment is most important for that spasticity. So today's, uh, in ses today's session, we will see how we can do electrodiagnostic way of assessing that spasticity. So here I want to quote one thing which is given by Vikas Khanna. It is disability is the inability to see ability. Means how we see that disability that depend on our vision. So now I correlate with this our spasticity means spasticity how we assess that depend on your uh, you can say calibration, your knowledge. So we can uh, assess properly. So definitely we can give the treatment proper. So here, we will start the electrodiagnostic assessment in spasticity. So in this, we will cover introduction and definition of spasticity, overview of muscle stretch reflex, then neurophysiology behind spasticity, then assessment tool, there are some ordinal scale that we will look out, then I, electrodiagnostic tool and end, then conclusion. So in introduction, the term spasticity, it is derived from Greek word that we call spastikos and spasmon to drew or stretch. And it was first used in English by Goulds in 1829, which is, which is describing in spastic rhinic. Then it is first recognized by orthopedic surgeon, Joe Stromayer in 1838, performs, uh, when he performed was a subcutaneous tenotomy of contracted extremity. And again, after that, it was again involved by, evolved by first description given by Little, and it is 1843. So this was how it that spasticity came in our, you can say, neuro rehabilitation, how we come to know about that spasticity. Then tone. And in neuro rehabilitation, we always uh, struggling with tone. But tone, it is a normal thing. When it will increase or decrease, then it will be abnormal thing. So basically, what is a tone? So tone is defined as a resistance of muscle to passive elong elongation or stretch when an individual attempt to maintain a muscle contraction. Means in short, we can say a state of muscle. It is, we can say tone. And 
tone is due to number of factor which will be the normal tone we can maintain so first is your physical inertia next is physical uh, intrinsic mechanical elastic stiffness in that muscles and connective tissue means how that muscle stiffness fiber is stiff or uh you can say relax and all that according to that then reflex muscle contraction means we call it as a tonic stretch reflex so on that basis tone uh, will matter of that muscle okay next tone abnormality are categorized first is your hypotonia because of increased tone we come to know the hypotonia because of decreased tone we come to know the hypotonia and dystonia means impair or disorder tonicity means there is a fluctuation of tone that we call as a dystonia next now this is a uh, tone we know it is in definitely in muscle okay but what is the normal physiology behind that so uh, first we will see normal physiology of muscle in that two types of muscle fiber first is extrafusal fiber next is intrafusal fiber okay in intrafusal fiber nuclear chain fiber nuclear back fiber so now what are the sensory to intrafusal fiber there is a first a fiber and second fiber a friend fiber then motor for extra fusal fiber are alpha motor neuron and intra fusal fiber are gamma motor neuron so these are the normal physiology this we all knows so just i'm briefly uh, you can say revising about the before we are jumping for electrodiagnostic so now uh, muscle what is a muscle stretch reflex so muscle stretch reflex means we know uh, when we do the tendon jerk so we got the reflexes okay means we get the norm simple jerk of at that joint okay so why it got because stretching of muscle stimulus mus muscle stimulus muscle spindle means when we uh, you can say jerk the patellar tendon for example so that time what exactly happen so we get the stretch of that muscle okay tendon so in that that get activate to sensory neuron then it is in uh, synapse in the information processing at motor neuron then it get activation of motor neuron and then we got the muscle contraction so because of that we get the knee jerk this is you can say normal muscle stretch so is there any you can say uh, problem in this muscle stretch then we can get the exaggerated jerk and that is a one of the basic symptoms for your uh, increased spasticity then next is how muscle tone is maintained in this uh, because of that we saw as a intrafusal fiber extrafusal fiber in that there was a sensory and motor uh, fibers so in that gamma motor neuron discharge for higher center that we know then because of that contraction of end of end of intrafusal fiber that will going uh, gives you the muscle spindle sensation sensitive to contraction that gives you the contraction of muscle spindle then first a fiber impulses to spinal cord and then reflex fi firing of alpha motor neuron that gives you the contraction of extrafusal fiber and that will maintain your muscle tone so this normal physiology that we already uh, saw in our um, you can say third year syllabus so in this if any miss in miss uh, disturbance or any miss uh, you can say any uh, increase uh, firing of alpha motor neuron so then you will not able to see the normal muscle tone so this mechanism is very important for maintaining the normal muscle tone and why this is important because on that basis only we are going to do the electrodiagnosis that's why it is a very important we should know the normal physiology of muscle tone next is there are n number of definition which we across about the spasticity so these are sums okay but basically which we follow that is this which is given by lands in 1980 spasticity is a motor disorder characterized by velocity dependent it is mo most important word increase in tonic stretch reflex with exaggerated tendon jerk resulting from hyper excitability of stretch reflex as it is a component of upper motor neuron syndrome as we all know it is a one of the uh, you can say clinical feature or major uh, sign of upper motor neuron it is a spasticity in that we basically we when we will say it is a velocity dependent that is only the one difference we can differentiate between the spasticity and the tightness and again with that what is the other thing that it is a major uh, you can say uh, about the spasticity the larger and quicker the stretch the 
stronger the resistance of spastic muscles next during rapid movement initial high resistance that we call as a catch followed by sudden inhibition or letting go limb it is relaxation in response to stretch reflex it is termed as a class neck response then chronic spasticity is associated with contracture that we always mostly know and abnormal posture deformity and functional limitation and disability so uh, that's why we are always differentiated between the spasticity and the uh, tightness with the help of some scale so what are they that we will see so these are the most common posture that we are able to see in spasticity in upper limb and lower limb for example adductor and internal rotator of shoulder flexor of wrist pronator of forearm in lower limb equino varus uh, stiff neck uh, knee and the flex uh, adductor thighs and means you can say scissoring gait so now uh, in assessment of spasticity so this is a one article in that they show the uh, clinical scale of assessment of spasticity associate phenomena and function as a systemic review literature okay which is given by t plas and et al so in that he mentioned before any intervention it is important to attend the assess the severity of spasticity that all we knows then how we are identification the degree of spasticity is still challenging problem in clinical practice because we have some scale which is which we use in clinical scenario which is more over you are you can say modify ashworth scale that we usually uh, usually used to assess the spasticity so many grading scale are used to call, uh, quantify the spasticity some electrophysiological tests are used to assess the spasticity of severity of spasticity so according to a t plus he give the 24 clinical scales that with the help of that we can assess the spasticity and related phenomena as well as 10 scale for active function and 3 scale for passive function we usually see only the uh, you can say assessment of spasticity but with that their function also important right so these are the scales which he uh, just listed for assessing the spasticity so from that we usually saw ashworth scale initially it was ashworth scale then it become a modify ashworth scale then after that it become a modify modify ashworth scale okay only the difference is between modify modify ashworth scale one plus is uh, converted into two other things are same and four is, that's why four is converted to five next is modify tardive scale which is mostly we use how to uh, you can say differentiate between the tightness and spasticity so if this angle r1 and r2 is less than 10 so we label as a tightness and if it is more than 10 so it is label as a you can say spasticity and it has reliability good reliability and validity also so now our main topic is electro diagnostic test okay and how we can use this to assess the spasticity so in that we have h reflex and f wave okay so what is h reflex h reflex is described by hoffman in 1980 and hence it is named as a h reflex please click carefully note down it is h reflex okay h reflex is monosynaptic reflex it is a reflex it is a monosynaptic it is elicited by supra maximal stimulation of tbl now recorded from calf muscle means there as in ncv uh, machines we have the sub maximal and supra maximal stimulation so in h reflex we always give a sub maximal stimulation means intensity will be not more than it is you can say 50 it will be uh, less than 50 then in normal adult it can be recorded in other muscle of limb also okay but usually when we talk about h reflex so most common site of your is it your is it your calf muscle soleus muscle okay then h reflex does not include the muscle spindle activation sorry but rest of the arc is similar to tendon reflex produced by muscle stretch which i initially uh, explained you about the stretch reflex so all over the stretch reflex muscle arc is similar according these things then uh, according to kalita mishra stated that h reflex studies have been employed for monitoring the excitability of anterior horn cell pool in different cns disorders such as a stroke 
so they gives you some you can say uh, starting point or in that they mention that we can use in anterior uh, where there is anterior horn cell means uh, you can say excitability where the, we can use as a h reflex as a assessment tool so here what exactly happen in your stretch uh, h reflex so and action potential travel along first day fiber neuron toward the spinal cord and synapses into the alpha motor neuron within anterior horn cell then consequently it is activation of motor neuron leads to impulse traveling peripherally to response muscle resulting in you get the muscle contraction and it stimulate distally and proximally within a mixed motor and sensory neuron so latency of response is measure of integrity of both sensory and motor so here i will show you in software so you will come to know how that we will record we will come after some time okay so in this first we will see the positioning how we will check the h reflex so here you are able to see the anode cathode and ground electrode and this is your stimulator electrode okay with the help of this we used to see the supramaximal and the uh, supramaximal stimulus and the uh, you can say submaximal stimulus with the help of this uh, stimulator okay so patient position this this technique is for soleus muscle okay then position patient will be prone position with a leg and thigh firmly supported thigh will be firmly supported on couch and feet will be just outside of couch so you get the relaxation in muscle then feet should be hang freely with dorsum at right angle to the tibia then recording active surface electrode is placed distal edge of the calf muscle okay and reference electrode on acalis tendon and ground electrode just nullifying the interference then we are giving the stimulation with the help of stimulator and we will give the sub maximal not a supra maximal stimulus yes so here if you are able to see on screen this is a h reflex we will able to see on monitor okay so here this is your h reflex and this is your m wave means whenever we are taking the h reflex we after that also with that also we get the m wave m wave means motor response of that muscle because obviously we are doing on calf muscle so we will get the motor response also okay so h and m response were evoke using a rectangular voltage pulse 1 millisecond in duration by stimulator so this is the h reflex wave and this is a m wave okay the intensity of stimulation will be gradually increased to record the maximal h reflex followed by min maximal m reflex means initially uh, we will give the sub maximal stimulation so we will get this h reflex wave right it was initially small then gradually it will goes on increasing 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 after some time there we will get the m wave also when we will get the m wave and when again we will increase this intensity so that h reflex will disappear and m wave will be goes on increasing increasing so in that how we will record this so we have to finalize maximum h reflex amplitude and maximum m uh, wave ka amplitude okay so here i want to show the software where you will clear so this is a software of rms machine so in that you are able to see the waves of h reflex so as initial intensity was 31 milliampere then it was goes increase on 40 so in 40 i got the m h h reflex amplitude bigger at the initial level from initial level when again if i increase the intensity so h reflex get disappear and m wave get appear so then which we will uh, fix means which wave we will finalize among this so where we get the maximum uh, you can say amplitude that way we will finalize and for m wave we will we can see which wave is a maximum then also we can uh, you can say record the m wave also okay and then we have to go for the hm ratio okay the but first here that i want to uh, specify this amplitude as you are able to see i can move this cursor so this is somewhere it is auto recorded 
and someone we have to do somewhere we have to do for manual so i always recommend for manual because manual gives you exact your idea and you are uh, what you want to do okay so always amplitude is like peak to peak as we know so that we have to just note it and if you are able to see if i move this cursor okay so you are able to see the fluctuating of this values okay so from this we will come to know the amplitude okay so this is your amplitude that we will come to know and that we have to note for your uh, recording okay and same with your m also for hm ratio otherwise we can just check the your uh, amplitude and latency okay latency if you are able to see h latency is 31.5 uh, and m latency is 4.5 Uh, one seven, but here is most important your amplitude of H and latency. Okay. Next. So again, we will go for a uh, presentation. Okay, fine. So here, as I already explained you, the peak to peak amplitude of maximal H reflex will be recorded for your uh, recording. means whatever you are keeping as a record for h reflex next what are the normal values when we can say it is h reflex is normal okay so latency of h reflex h reflex is the first deflection from your baseline okay amplitude is measured from peak to peak then hm ratio is amplitude of h reflex and amplitude of m wave that we can when uh, so that will be gives you the ratio okay then upper limit of soleus h reflex latency is 35 milli millisecond and flexor carpi radialis is 20 millisecond so it is not necessary always we will say the h reflex is from lower limb there are some uh, latest article also that gives you idea h reflex we can go for the upper limb also i will explain you in uh, briefly so here so in this table you are able to see what values Uh, the normal for h reflex okay the number of factor determine latencies are age height and limb, limb length it will be equal as like ncvs in ncv also it matters depend on age as we all know as our age increases your uh, no conduction will get uh, disturb means impaired so according to that it will varies okay then according to height also because height will gives you that uh, you can say transition of the action potential and all that so that will vary according to height and limb length then h reflex tend to smaller with age okay amplitude of h reflex is too variable between the subject to be reliable criteria but it is useful measure in side to side comparison of unilateral pathology means for example in research if we use okay so as such there is a no a uh, normative data we have the normative values of h reflex normal but when it is uh, compare with your patient so that's why we will require the normal also means we have always compare with your normal side means when we do you our uh, ncvs okay so that time also if there is a problem in our one limb right hand but still we while, while checking we compare with both limb okay right and left and then we will see it is equal or not because as it will be uh, different uh height and age according to that that's why always it is reliable when we check with simultaneously so same applicable here also okay then right to left asymmetry of soleus h reflex latency is normally 1.5 millisecond is permissible after that we can say it is abnormal so this is the normal h reflex that we will able to see and this value is most important is h amplitude and h latency for our research or if we want to see the uh, difference or you can say you if you want to find out the any uh, what uh, we can say what my patient how it is uh, improve so for that also this value it will be important next these are some uh, you can say area where we uh, we can do the h reflex but normally as i already explain you soleus is the most common site where we uh, use h reflex but other than also quadricep muscle flexor carpi radialis then uh, bicep brachii these are the some com, uh, site which where we can uh, use the h reflex and uh, h reflex on this muscles okay which is given by de burki uh, in this uh, 
this this publication uh, this article is published in clinical neurophysiology practice in 2016 next clinical uh, there are some article so means uh, as i am always uh, means from initial point i am saying h reflex we can use for spasticity but how we will recommend how we will believe that so for all uh, academician or for all that we we mostly important for us is article okay so on that basis only the clinical use of h reflex of upper and lower muscles okay so on that basis we can say so what he says for all muscle the cathode should be over the appropriate now and but optimal site for anode will be differ according to your muscles then for femoral muscle for example they gave some muscles uh, nerves and mus uh, for femoral nerves anode should be placed on buttock opposite to opposite the cathode so that the current flow through the nerves then for median nerve at wrist an anode over the radius is a convenient because it is minimize the spread of ulna because it will you know that the nerves are very uh, close to each other that's why it felt it can be shows you the spread that's why then for radial nerve cathode should be over the spiral groove and anode place on the biceps so now here again question arises what are the evidence for h reflex okay as i am saying so you can't recommend or you can't agree yeah we can use but what are the literature says is it really effective or not so there are some literature reviews that says relationship between the ashworth scale which we widely use in our assessment of spasticity so ashworth scale score and the accessibility of alpha motor neuron in patient with post stroke muscle spasticity so he says shorter h reflex latency and increased hm ratio in stroke patient sorry sorry ha sorry so he says shorter h reflex latency and increase in h uh, hm ratio in stroke patient with score of with score of 1 or 2 on the mms score means when there was a on according to modify ashworth scale there was a 1 or 2 so what is the correlation between ashworth scale and h reflex so there is a strong there is a correlation between the ashworth scale and the uh, you can say uh, h reflex latency and hm ratio then electrophysiological assessment of spasticity in children using h reflex means not only adult we can use in this children also so in this article they says that h reflex latency was significantly shorter and hm ratio was significantly higher in patient with cerebral palsy in next article yes so here this article is published in journal of physical uh, therapy science so in this the title was like uh, they did the comparison of amplitude of h reflex of post stroke hemiplegia patient and normal adult so they found that comparison show that significant difference between hm ratio in all gait cycle between the stroke group and control group so they compare between the control means normal uh, you can say stroke patient and the uh, normal healthy adult and the stroke patient so they found there was some difference so our h reflex h and stretch reflex in hemiplegia is reproducible and correlated with spasticity so here they found the significant means h reflex amplitude was significantly greater in spastic subject so from all this article we can say h reflex is reliable tool for assessing the spasticity and basically because it gives you the alpha motor firing level and we all knows the in spasticity as it is alpha motor neuron firing is increased so definitely h reflex will catch that so we will come to know the uh, spasticity uh, on the basis of objective scale that uh, in the sense of amplitude and latency and hm ratio so next is our f wave okay so this is a wave this is not a reflex initial was reflex and this is a wave so f wave is late response resulting from antidromic activation of motor neuron involving conduction to form a spinal cord and occur at the interference between the peripheral and central system so name f 
wave is attributed to their recognition for first time in small muscle of foot by Magdury and McDonald in 1950. Then it is elicited by supramaximal stimulus of peripheral nerve at the distal side, leading to both orthodromic and antidromic impulses. While orthodromic impulses travel to distal muscles, an antidromic response is for anterior onset. So this is also near about, uh, you can say, uh, we can use for the your assessment of the spasticity, but it is a wave, it is not a reflex, okay? And there's a no synapses in Paul. So F wave is not considered as a reflex, but only measure the motor neuron conduction, okay? F wave is usefully in diagnosis of conduction where most proximal portion of exon is involved, for example, GBS and radiculopathies. And F response, is used in pharmacological studies of spasticity as measure the alpha motor neuron excitability again, and it must be calculated on the basis of at least 10 successive trials. Means how we will check the F reflex, that uh, F wave that we will see, okay? So in this, again, your uh, stimulation, stimulation will be the distal muscle by stimulating appropriate nerve, okay? Then supramaximal stimulation should be given. Cathode will be a cathode should be placed on proximal to anode to avoid the anode block. Then recording will be electrode is placed on the belly tendon similar to MNCV. The way we will do the MNCV of this. So this is the stimulation and all that, and then we will catch the wave on your uh, monitor. Now, how we will assess the F wave? Okay, so there are these are the parameter. On that basis, we will assess the F wave. First is measurement include latency, chrono dispersion, persistency, amplitude, and repeater wave. So, what these all? I will explain you one by one. Latency. The F response usually occur at latency twenty five to thirty two millisecond in upper limb and lower limb is. 45 to 56, the best line, okay? When we will see the software, that time you will come to know. Then chrono dispersion, it refer the difference between minimal and maximal latency, okay? Please note this, when we will see the software, so we done is up to four millisecond in upper limb will be normal and six millisecond in lower limb. Then amplitude, F wave is actually small, as a compound motor action potential and representing one to five percentage of muscle fiber. Means the wave which is able to see, M wave also if we are able to see. So what will be the value of that? It will be the one to five percentage of CMAP of F wave. Then normal F wave persistence usually 80 to 100 percent and always above 50 percent. Means how much we will got that F wave. Okay, so here again, I'm uh, going for that software. So you will able to clear how it look like. Okay, so here you are able to see this is M wave and this is F wave. Okay, so consistently we will calculate minimum 10 F wave. Okay, when we will increase the intensity and all that. So we will just count 10 consecutive F wave. In that first, I told you F minimum and maximum. Means for example, if this is your F wave, so which F wave come first? So this is this is the cursor, which you are able to see in uh, you can say green line. So this is the cursor where we will mark from this. If we are considering from this third wave, okay, third or fourth wave. So which F wave come first? So for example, this wave come first. So we will mark like this, okay, and F maximum. So which F wave come last? For example, this F wave come last. So we will mark here. So then we will find out the difference between this that we will give you H and M minimum difference. So this will be the HM minimum and HM maximum. Okay. So that we have to notice. So here F minimum and F maximum. So 25 and 27. So I initially I mentioned that uh, four in upper limb and six in lower limb, that is a normal. So according to that, we have to interpret. So this F minimum, F maximum will be important in this, okay? So here I'm closing this.
okay so that was the characteristic for f waves next f wave latency is very sensitive measure for polyneuropathy because it it mainly measure your distal now that's why then latency is prolonged in peripheral neuropathy radiculopathy and proximal nerve injury mark prolong latency with normal cmap is including of demyelination so as we always know uh, we, our action potential so when there will be the problem in your latency there will be the problem in your myelin sheath and when there is a problem in your amplitude so there will be problem in exon so that's why mark prolong latency with normal cmap with with indicative of demyelinating neuropathy okay then comparison uh, comparison of f, f latency with distal latency can provide the major of proximal versus distal nerve dysfunction means how it will be the nerve dysfunction function between the proximal and distal nerve that we will come to know so prominently f wave is reported for gullian bardi syndrome okay as it will be the most uh, you can say evident things and uh, regarding to f wave so so this is a uh, monitor which on that we will able to see the f wave okay now again all we will uh, recommend or we can say uh, always literature matters so again what literature say about the f wave so f wave for assessment of segmental mon motor um, sorry motor neuron excitability so here they found that f wave found to increase in amplitude duration and persistent on spastic side okay and number of f wave h f and m and mean of me f mean and uh, you can say m mean and amplitude also ratio were also increasing in wall side means your hemiplegic side so they found as compared to normal so there was increase f wave all this hm ratio amplitude and latency and minimum maximum again in other article modify ashwa scale and alpha motor neuron excitability indicator of f wave means as a indicator of f wave how what they uh, observe so in that there is a strong correlation between modify ashwa scale and persistence of f wave again other articles also says same means when they compare with effect of physiotherapy on f wave amplitude in the spasticity so mean of f amplitude and maximum f amplitude it will be the ratio and uh, ratio of f and m wave were significantly lower after the physiotherapy because initially for example alpha motor neuron activity will be more if we give some treatment so there will be the alpha motor neuron activity will be less so after it will be the effect of your treatment so definitely your amplitude will goes reduces so that will be you can say uh, physio uh, effect of your physiotherapy treatment okay so and there was uh, again article which is given by andrews on f wave so increase mean of f amplitude it will be the good reflection of your spasticity so these are some article which has given you the h and f uh, evidence till now and there again there are recent some articles also this is a common you can say differentiation between the h reflex and f wave uh, how we can difference between the h reflex and f wave so h reflex is monosynaptic where f wave is antidromic stimulation of motor neuron then h reflex at is a reflex so it is a first day fiber which is carry and f wave is a motor purely it is a motor then it is a afferent and efferent it is a first day fiber and motor neuron here is both are the motor then it is a Uh, h reflex is best elicited in soleus and fcr but other sites also there which i already explained and f wave is any distal muscle where we can go for the f wave h reflex it is stimulated by submaximal response where f wave is stimulated by supramaximal response means here we will require up to the 50 is okay 50 milli ampere but here we will require more than 50 so we can go up to the 70 also okay when we increase the stimulus h reflex get inhibit means when i initially show you monitor where we was increasing the intensity your h reflex get disappearing and we are getting the m wave same in f reflex increasing stimulus will be the facilitating for f wave okay then what were the amplitude means in both h and f wave we initially we got the m wave so what will be the the amplitude of amplitude of h reflex 
50 to 100 percent of m wave means whatever the m wave we will get so that's why 50 to 100 percent of that and in f wave it will be the five percent of that m wave okay then motor unit of m will be different in h and it will be same in f wave because it will be moreover it is like ncv ncv may whatever the your position it will be on muscles so that's why it will be the same but if h reflex it will be the different then persistency will be in h reflexes will be there in f wave it will be the variable that's why whenever we are counting or whenever we are we can say recording so that's why persistence will matter means consecutive we will require the minimum 10 f wave then only we will uh, freeze that wave okay next useful mainly in neuropathy h reflex radiculopathy and spasticity both as recent advances says so you can say take home message or conclusion of this discussion h and f wave is reliable for electrophysiological test for assessment of spasticity because till now we mostly use the modified work which which widely used in our clinical setup okay because it is very handy and all that but it is more of a subjective so for objective measurement this is a good tool that we can use for our research and for showing the improvement for patient then h reflex amplitude was significantly greater in spastic subject okay so this will be again research related okay so how we will get the amplitude of pre and post so how we have to compare then increase the mean of amp amplitude it will be the good reflection of spasticity so again it will be related to your amplitude i uh, means as per my practices i always go for amplitude rather than latency okay because it will be the peak to peak so it will gives you the uh, best uh, you can say measurement and when we go for the hm ratio so amplitude of f and amplitude of h will be if we compare a uh, ratio so that will gives you the best uh, you can say measurement or one of the best assessment tool for your uh, improvement of spasticity or assessment of the spasticity so these are the references from that this article uh, this are some articles and the information ma mainly uh, from kalita mishra and there are some article which suggest that h reflex and f wave which is good for your electrodiagnostic way of spasticity. So here I end with my discussion as an electrodiagnostic way. Thank you very much for your attention and cooperation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Sanjeevni, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge and putting light over the electrophysiological, electrodiagnostic way of assessing spasticity. Uh, very well covered with what are what is the uh, pathophysiology of spasticity, covering the outcome measures currently used and adding on to the knowledge of how electrophysiologically and how we can objectify more with the spasticity and what are the best tools that should be used for research. Thank you. Thanks very much for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, ma'am, for giving Thank your you. valuable time also. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the... Uh, opportunity for sharing these things. Thank you very much, ma'am. Hope our viewers get a more depth knowledge about spasticity and what are the various ways and electrophysiological ways and electrodiagnostic way to assess it. Thank you.